Early in the morning on Sunday the 23rd of July 1882, a 29-year-old Dutchman climbed up onto the roof of his house in a suburb of The Hague while his alcoholic prostitute girlfriend and her small child slept downstairs. On any other day, this young man would have had plenty to complain about. His parents have just disowned him. He's had two marriage proposals rejected. He's been sacked twice and he's just come out of hospital yet again for gonorrhea. But on this day, he feels happy. He looks out across the rooftops, he completes a watercolour and then he paints the scene again, this time in the words of a letter to his brother, Theo van Gogh. You must imagine me here, he writes. Over the red tiled roofs comes a flock of white pigeons flying between the black smoking chimneys. Behind this, an infinity of delicate, gentle green, miles and miles of flat meadow, and a grey sky as still and as peaceful as a Corot or Van Goyen. This is the subject of my watercolour. I hope you'll like it. I've found my work, he writes in another letter from around this time, something which I live for heart and soul. I have a certain faith in art, a certain trust that it's a powerful current that drives a person. Now, coming from anyone else in his position, he'd only been studying art for two years. That might have just been pretentious guff, but what wonderful art he had been creating. Paintings and drawings that really capture the lonely atmospheric feel of the flatlands at the edge of the city, canals spearing towards the flat horizon, skies full of fast-moving dark clouds. Early work, maybe, but already it seems to hold out the promise of another Rembrandt in the making. Van Gogh's life story is a familiar tale. The unstable genius who, in a fit of despair, cut off his ear. The life of the passionate misfit has been filtered through countless pot boilers and biopics. In Vincent Minnelli's 1950s version, Kirk Douglas ratchets up the emotional volume as a restless, caged animal whose crippling depression turns to frenzied ecstasy in the sunlit landscapes of the south of France. In his most radiant pictures, you can see Van Gogh's faith in nature as a religion, unstaged, uncut, and it's impossible to appreciate where this passion came from without understanding his early years in Holland and Belgium. Van Gogh hadn't set out to be an artist. He started off in the priesthood, preaching to poor coal miners in Belgium, but he failed spectacularly. He had a stammer, and despite his devotion, his church superiors deemed him unfit for public speaking. In Holland, he chose again to settle among the rural poor, but this time, not to preach to his subjects, but to paint them. It's a strange paradox that Vincent van Gogh, who painted some of the most radiant, light-filled paintings in the whole history of art, should have begun. This is his first major ambitious figure painting with a work that is so dark, so murky, so copper-coloured. It's called The Potato Eaters, and what you first notice about it is this pervasive drabness. Van Gogh himself actually liked the effect. He said, my subject is potato eaters, and I want to paint them in the colours of a muddy potato, unpeeled, of course. He said he wanted the picture to smell of potato steam and bacon. I can also smell the thick, malty aroma of this peasant brew the old lady's pouring. It's a viscous form of chicory coffee. Quite disgusting, but all that they could afford. The picture was greatly criticised. The hands were said to be too gnarled, the arms too long, the faces too caricatured, the eyes too bulging, the noses 
too much like potatoes. But it was all intentional. Van Gogh wanted us to feel that those hands reaching into that plate of cubed potatoes had dug those potatoes up from the earth. Those hands have been shaped, misshapen, by all that manual labour. Although it's such a visually unappealing, unappetising, literally copper-coloured murk of a picture, Van Gogh did continue to regard it throughout his life as, in quotes, one of the best things I have done. And I do think it's an extremely significant picture in the context of his whole career because it establishes right from the outset what he's all about as a painter. What mattered to Van Gogh throughout his life was not sophisticated technique. He wanted to remake in paint the intensity and violence of his own feelings and to arouse those feelings in his audience. Van Gogh's later French pictures might look very different from his early work, but they too use a form of self-conscious exaggeration, an ecstatic version of caricature. It's an attempt to forge a kind of new religion for the common man, for the potato eaters of this world. Everyday experiences of field and flower become visions of divine beauty. And it would reach a climax in his most famous subject of all. Van Gogh had left Holland simply because it was too gloomy for an artist trying to find God, trying to find some sense of transcendence in the natural world. Too much rain, too much shadow, too much darkness. That's why he went to the south of France. In the south of France, he felt illuminated by the sun. He said, suddenly nature's colours sing to me. He felt that he'd never seen the colours of nature before. He felt that he'd found what he was looking for. And I think the sunflower was so important to him because it was a plant that seemed to him to have somehow taken into itself, kept, preserved, all that radiance, all that colour. It was as if he was looking at the sun itself when he looked at these blooms. And he painted these pictures in a kind of storm of enthusiasm. He wrote to Theo, his brother, to say that I am painting with the energy of a Marseillais eating bouillabaisse, always the food metaphors. And this is almost a picture that you could eat. It's as if it's been painted in that Provençal mayonnaise they call aioli, that hot, peppery, garlic-infused mayonnaise. Van Gogh also said that the sunflower is mine in a way. Why was it his? Well, I think he knew. He knew that his life, his career was going to be a short one. And my goodness, how short it was. I mean, his career was like a comet flashing across the sky. He compressed into just five years of a career what most other artists would spend perhaps 40 years creating. And I think that's what he's depicting when he depicts the sunflower. He's depicting his sense of himself, this rapid rise. This one seems anthropomorphized. It could be an outraged eye staring into space. Then these others, these are cut flowers, we see them falling. It's as if the whole of Van Gogh's life is encapsulated in this one picture. He signed it Vincent. In that wonderful mauve colour, Vincent on the vase. As if to say, this is me, this is who I was.